So you want to be a paladin, a sorcerer, a warlock, a bard, and a cleric all together? Well, you can with multi-classing. Today we're going to go through all the multi-class options for each class and some multi-classing tips that you really should know before you consider doing it. Let's go! Let me know in the comments who and why you are multi-classing. So firstly, let's talk about how to multi-class. So anytime you're on the level up screen in the top right of that window, you'll see an add class option. And by here, you can just add any class that you haven't already added and you will gain the first level of that specific class. So from then on, anytime you level up, you'll be able to pick between those classes and choose which one you want to level up. You will only gain a level in the class that you specifically choose. Now, because of how complicated this is and that when you level up, you don't necessarily gain a level in both of the classes, you have to pick which one you're leveling up. There is a lot of careful consideration that needs to go into why you're multi-classing and the reasons. And, and because also there is no restrictions in Baldur's Gate 3, Larian have removed the D&D &D specific restrictions for multi-classing. So here you can just do literally anything you want. But I guess the caveat to that is that you can always respec at Withers for the cost of 100 gold. If say you've messed up, you can just nick back there and respec your class and just start again. But let's go through the major tips and consideration you need to think of. There's three things I think to put into this category. The first is the level breakpoints. The second is the spells, casting and slots. And the third is proficiencies. So by level breakpoints, what I mean here is that the main consideration really should be for multi-classing, you're essentially at the top of things, locking yourself out of level 12. So whatever your main class is, you'll never get to level 12 being the max level. And also the level you gain your final feat as well at level 12, you're locking yourself out of that. But you in turn, if you multi-class at weird points, you'll also lock yourself out of class features. Because let's say, for example, with some of the martial classes like the barbarian, the fighter, the paladin or the monk, they all gain a extra attack at level five, right? Say if you multi-class at level four, into something else and never take another level of any of those martial classes, you're missing out on a core element of that class because you multi-classed one level early and you never took that level five in that martial class to gain that benefit, which is a huge benefit for those classes. I should mention as well, the ranger also gains an extra attack at level five. The next is the spell casting slots. So spell casting modifiers are different for certain classes. So for example, it may sound fun to be like a sorcerer with meta magic and then add a wizard to get like that massive spell pool that wizards have but they have different spell casting modifiers, meaning sorcerer spells will be cast using charisma and wizard spells will be cast using intelligence. And this can in turn be very confusing because they have an overlapping spell pool in terms of the spells that they could use. But depending on whether you took those spells as either a sorcerer or a wizard, it will use those as your spell casting modifier, which in turn means that your ability point spread will be stretched pretty thin if you're trying to balance both of those spell casting modifiers. And on top of that, you also won't gain spell slots in the same way. So, you know, just like you won't gain the level 12 feet, you also have different breakpoints in terms of when you gain different spell slots, depending on the classes that you're multi-classing with, and that'll then change that as well. And on top of that, each class has its own section in the spell book, so they don't share spells. So if you are using the sorcerer and wizard example again, sorcerer spells can't prepare their spells, whereas a wizard can. So wizards can actually use this menu still to prepare spells, but your sorcerer spells will always be prepared. And on top of that, some classes just aren't built to be spellcasters. Like the Barbarian, for example, cannot cast spells while raging, which makes it not a great class to multi-class with for a lot of these classes that are very spell orientated. I know that's a lot of information and it's a little complex, but I've tried to make it simple, but we'll go through some specific spell like builds and stuff in a little bit. But firstly, proficiencies. So classes gain proficiencies inherently, like when you pick them just a character creation, as well as when you're multi-classing. But some of them won't always gain the same amount of proficiencies that you might get, say, when you create them a character creation. A good example of this is the fighter. And when at character creation, you will gain heavy armor proficiency as your default class. But if you multi-class from a wizard, say, to a fighter, you won't gain that heavy armor proficiency. You'll still gain light and medium armor, but just not heavy. So just pay attention to that. But also if you already have proficiency in something, like let's say if you're multi-classing from a barbarian and adding a fighter, you've probably got most of those proficiencies anyway, except the armor ones. So it doesn't matter that much in terms of proficiencies. So I 
I wouldn't consider multi-classing just for proficiencies unless it's a very specific build you're going for. But as mentioned, if you mess up, just go back to Withers and respec and it is a-okay. But if I haven't turned you off multi-classing with all of this nonsense, let's go through some of the best multi-classing options. So keep in mind here that you can do whatever you like, right? Like these are just some simple options that I wanted to sort of cover for anyone that's considering dabbling in multi-classing as it is very fun and there's a lot of cool like unique things you can do with it and just because of the freedom with withers and being able to respec anytime you like you can definitely change things so we'll start with the stealth god rogue ranger now this is a great pairing because they are both dexterity based classes you could do something funky with strength if you wanted to but using astarian as an example here i would get astarian's rogue to say level four and grab assassin and then get into gloom stalker ranger and get that to max level being eight that you can there because these two pair so well as the assassin being the it's like stealth orientated class for the rogue and the benefits you gain not only to your initiative but also to actually attacking from stealth and the gloom stalker is essentially the ranger's version of this where if on the first turn of every combat encounter you gain an extra attack that does additional damage so you attack from stealth and then you can also deal like stealth attacks from there and then once that combat encounter starts you've got the access to the dread ambusher so plenty of synergies there plus when you multi-class these classes together whether you're starting as a ranger or a rogue you get additional skills because one each class will gain additional skills especially the ranger with favored enemy and natural explorer the benefits you get from there but also as a rogue you get expertise in two skills as well so they're great skill combos to combine together plus also if we're thinking about breakpoints here the ranger does gain an extra attack at level five which is something the rogue doesn't so you've got that additional benefit by combining these two classes the next i'm just going to call charisma combos because there's a lot of charisma classes that can all sort of mesh together i wouldn't do this like all of them together in one build but you can combine them in interesting ways right so that would be the paladin the bard the warlock and the sorcerer these four classes all share charisma as their spell casting modifier which not only makes them good talkers for say like you know being the player character to pass a lot of spell checks they also combine simply together because they all have that as their spell casting modifier and they are spell casting classes but then that varies a little bit in terms of what that means so to give you a couple of examples here you could combine a paladin with with a bard at level two as a paladin you gain divine smite which is honestly the main reason you would go a paladin because of the extra radiant damage you get from those attacks at level five you get that extra attack and then if you combine it with a bard you can pick a subclass at level three and then gain the benefits there from either going law to lean more into spell casting potentially go swords to get those extra sword flourish attacks or something like that but that's an option to combine plus the extra skills you get as a bard you could definitely go warlock and sorcerer together as that's a combo that everyone has talked about before and it's a fantastic combination because the warlock is lacking in spell casting elements but you definitely want to be a spell caster as a warlock and combining with the sorcerer gives you that plus because they're matching charisma modifier you get access to eldritch blast plus the benefits you get from it if you're combining these two classes i would be getting the warlock to at least level two to get the eldritch in invocations so you can buff your eldritch blast and obviously sorcerer to at least level two as well for meta magic and the sorcery points which is the main reason you play a sorcerer as well but both those classes pick their subclass at level one so you'll get that initially just by going that class i'm calling this the battle mage and it is a wizard and a fighter because for one i you know i wanted to put every single class on this list and the wizard is a weird one because they don't share a spell casting modifier with any other spell casting class because that is intelligence for them you could consider pairing it with say like a level three eldritch fighter or a level three arcane trickster because the arcane trickster does share an int modifier with the wizard but it sort of fits weirdly like if you're looking to multi-class as a wizard you're probably considering picking up something like a fighter for the proficiencies more than anything else so those proficiencies allowing you to wear light or medium armor while you're actually still able to cast spells to increase your overall armor class just to make you a bit more tanky and you could get into melee range then if you wanted because you've also got some weapon proficiencies from combining it with the fighter a couple of things to consider here if you're making this sort of a combination fighter gains an extra attack at level five and an extra feat at level six if you want to go more the fighter route than wizard and the wizard gains its school or its subclass at level two and then it gains level three spells at level five level four spells at level seven level five spells at level nine and level six spells at level 11 so those different like higher level spells that you obviously will want to be using as a wizard just keep that in mind when you're sort of balancing those two classes together that you probably if you want to go in the spell casting route you definitely only want to pick up say one or two levels of the fighter and then 
stack the wizard because the spell casting element is still your main sort of goal there. Nature's demon is a druid and cleric combination. Now they share the wisdom as their spell casting modifier. Combining these two classes allows you to use Shalele as a cleric, which will add that bludgeoning damage to your melee weapons as a cleric, which is great. You could also go something like a war domain cleric for the martial weapon proficiencies here. The druid isn't a great multi-class option again, because it is a really unique class being that it's got so much going for it on its own. It's it's sort of like a multi-classed class on its own, right? Like there are so many different ways that you can take the druid, whether you're going a spell casting route, maybe a little bit of melee route with Shalele, potentially wild shaping or, you know, necromancy. There's a lot going for it anyway, but just to give you a bit of an option here, if you are a druid or a cleric, you can combine these two to give your cleric wild shape or give your druid some more proficiencies and maybe a bit more melee prowess. You've got options there as well. The Berserker Barbarian Fighter is probably the best option for a Barbarian because the Barbarian, as mentioned earlier, isn't a great multi-class option because you cannot cast spells when you are enraged. So combining it with something like a Fighter, especially like a Champion Fighter, that's a very sort of simple subclass, is a perfect combination here because Fighters gain Action Surge, which essentially gives you another action, so you can attack again. And Second Wind, which is something that Barbarians severely lack, is a way to heal themselves, which Second Wind will allow them to do so. Keep in mind here that the Barbarian and the Fighter gain an extra attack at level 5. If you are a level 5 Barbarian and a level 5 Fighter, you won't gain an extra extra attack. You'll only get that extra attack once. And worth pointing out here as well, both the Barbarian and the Fighter pick their subclass at level 3. So you want to make sure you get both of those to level 3 so you can pick a subclass. For the Barbarian, I would either be going the Berserker or Wild Heart. Depends on what you sort of prefer there. And Fighter probably Champion, though you could dabble in Battle Master. The Fighter class also gains an extra feat at level 6. So if you're worried about, say, missing that feat you get from level 12, if you get your fighter to level 6, you'll still gain that feat as well. Lastly on this list is the Healing Monk. Now, again, the Monk is a weird class to multi-class with. It has such a good martial kit based around it. It also doesn't want to wear armor, a bit like the Barbarian. And as a Monk, you don't really want to use weapons either. So you like multi-classing as a monk is a bit weird. You could maybe combine it with a cleric to give yourself some say healing properties for yourself and your allies because monks will use wisdom not only for their unarmored defense to increase their armor class but also for their spell casting modifier for the spells if they go the four elements route. Potentially you could then combine it with a cleric to give yourself some more weapon proficiencies if you do make weapon attacks and maybe a shield but I also wouldn't be wearing armor in that case but it's not clean. I'm not telling you this is going to be a great build. I just wanted to include something for the monk because I've included something for every other class. So just to give you monk lovers out there an option, things to consider here is that monks gain a subclass at level three and an extra attack at level five. So just make sure you're hitting those breakpoints as the monk and then before you'll say picking up the cleric. But that is everything I have for you today, guys. Let me know your favorite multi-class options in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.